Good evening, good evening, good evening. Once again, we are back with another conversation regarding our health. The conversation of diet. You are what you eat. That is so, so important. And we're back in the studio again tonight on the set. You see, we have three individuals. Of course, Dr. Rivo was here with us last week uh, where she dived into a presentation that was very real, in my opinion. It, it shows a, a story in so many ways. But more importantly, part of that story is a gentleman to my left who is, uh, had some great success as uh, Pastor Riva, Dr. Riva has, uh, but she wants to share that with you. So that's a recap from last week. She shared a presentation as to the journey that she's been on and how the steps that she um, implicated uh, to get her success. And so as she continues with that, because she has to finish that presentation, that slide, um, once she's done with that, we will feel some questions based on that slide, based on our presentation. And then after that, we will have a conversation with uh, Pastor Paul, Paul Richardson. Um, and also, Doctor, we're going to prove her with some more questions based on that presentation on that slide. So enough being said, uh, I would allow, again, for those of you that didn't have the opportunity to see us the last time, I would allow Dr. Riva to introduce herself and along with uh, Pastor Carl to my left to introduce himself with respect to this ministry and these goals that we've set for ourselves. Good evening. Well, I'll go first. Uh, my name is Pastor Carl Ambrose Richardson. Before I became a, a pastor of a church, I was a practicing attorney um, for several years um, on the mainland. I completed my studies in Austin, uh, worked in, in Houston, and that was when I, I was first introduced to health uh, because the partners with the firm that I used to work actually paid for my membership to go to the what we call the Met. I was on several stores up, um, and I loved the view, and they used to also give you free breakfast. <laughs> uh, so they, got, the they caught me with the food, and that when I began to um, kind of dibble dabble with the um, equipment and what was available with the sun and all of that, and realized that whenever I would spend time in the gym, it gave me a positive feeling um, in regards to my day and gave me a positive outlook in regards to my week. Um, so have been doing it off and on for a little bit, mostly um, just for um, that benefit, how it made me feel as a young person. As I got older, I came back home, uh, loved the food trucks, um, patronized a lot of them, put on a lot of weight, didn't notice it uh, because I'm just a happy fellow and enjoy life to the fullest and enjoy food and, um, and got really, really huge um, to like 300 pounds, just under 300 pounds, and had to make the desperate journey back down to the weight I used to be at, um, and, and now I'm actually lower than that weight. I used to be around 235, 240 um, back then, and so I give God thanks to my wife, who is a medical physician, but has always stayed on the leaner side, and has always been careful about what she ate, ate and she helped guide me. Um, and then I met the influence of other uh, key persons, such as Craig Matthias, who came into our church and became part of the ministry that Reba um, um, founded. Um, and also Dr. John Lewis and many, many others has contributed to where I'm at today. So I just want to let you know, it's been a journey. Um, when I became committed to the journey, it was, it was about seven years out. And I'm still actively, actually, now that I've reached and exceeded my target, I've reset my targets and I have some new targets um, that require me to continue on the path um, to get there. And so I call this my final, my final phase, my final, my final phase in terms of pursuing where I want to be in my overall health as I go into my sunset years. Awesome. That's awesome. That's an awesome story. And I'm sure we're going to talk a little bit more about that as the night goes on, but we're going to allow yeah. Dr. Eva to finish that slide. But again, for those of you that haven't met, Dr. Reva Richardson, she's been, uh, like Pastor said, the visionary with this ministry. She was one that brought in the thought, the idea of what it takes or what it requires for, church, for a healthier church. Doc? Well, good evening, everyone. I'm, I'm honored to be back here again this evening to continue our conversation about the fact that um, we are indeed what we, what we eat. And as um, Pastor Carl um, just recapped for us, um, what we eat, truly impacts how um, our weight uh, would look 
like um, going forward. And as you um, age, you know, with it comes a lot of medical diseases, but a lot of these medical diseases are secondary to um, the fact of the foods that we have eaten, the toxic foods that we have eaten. And so last week, um, when we um, when we had a conversation, um, I was introducing you to a concept that um, that was um, shared in a book that is called The Pound of Cure. And, um, and this was one of the many different resources that, that I looked towards when I was trying to find um, a way to get our family and ourselves um, back into the healthy um, lifestyle. Um, and so what that concept is, is that we all have a metabolic set point um, that you know we are born with it. We have genetic um, factors that affect it as well as environmental factors. And with that set point, it, um, the, that set point uh, affects you know where our um, where our weight is, and as we make changes with our um, our foods, we start to move the set point forward up uh, upward or lower, depending on the um, depending on your your body's response to these foods. And so, what we learned last week is that when we are given um, we have a set point. Um, and then when we're given, um, we overfeed our bodies, what naturally supposed to happen is that our own hunger is supposed to decrease, our metabolism increases, and we bring back down the weight back into that set point. But as we live on this earth and we get exposed to um, toxic foods, um, these set points get offset and they start to move higher and higher. And that's how we end up with weight gain. And so, um, so what we concluded last week is that if we can find a way to reset the set point back down to a, a goal that is healthy, then we should be able to hopefully um, have our um, weight decrease and also our health improve. It changes with and so the, the set point that we learned last week is affected by several factors, affected by our stresses that we are exposed to, depression, medications, if we had an injury that caused us to be inactive, um, specifically certain foods and genetics, especially processed foods, hormones, you know, um, that are added to the foods and to um, as a way of getting them to grow quicker. They are also, when we eat, we get those hormones, they cause our set point to change, different diseases, but about diseases, dieting, um, you know, going back on that yo-yo that we talked about last week, and lack of sleep. Those are all things that affect our set point. And so, and, but, and negatively is the impact that they actually have on the set point, most of them. And so what we talked about is that in order to reset the, the set point, we need to improve our high quality um, foods and decrease the, the low quality foods from our diet. And so we talk about the spectrum where you have those individuals who have a very strict vegan diet, and then you have those who have a totally processed diet and having us move from that totally processed diet into a metabolic, um, you know, um, clean eating metabolic um, diet. And so um, the way that we do that is by um, looking at the fact that different foods would raise and lower our thermostat. And so the foods that are rich in vegetables, fruits, starchy vegetables, nuts and seeds, those are good foods. Um, meats and dairy, grains and refined food, not so good because they're calorie dense and they raise our um, set point. Um, and so, uh, our goal then is to, if the set point is in the middle, our goal then is to try to have most of our meals come from the left, which is a colorful starchy vegetables or nuts and seeds or beans or fruits or vegetables and limits the corn, the potato, the cheese, the milk, the junk food, the artificial sweeteners, the animal proteins, the bread, et cetera. Okay, so same, same, same information pretty much here on this slide. And so, one of these things that are important for us to do to set up a set point is to start to make vegetables our medicine. Because, you know, um, Hippocrates make a statement in the past that let food be your medicine. But when he made that statement, back then we ate pretty good foods. But today what we call foods, which is mainly processed foods, are not good foods. And they, as I mentioned, affect our body and cause a lot of toxins to our body and cause a lot of diseases. And so the goal then is to, um, to change that statement and say, let our vegetables be our medicine. And we know this because in 1990, um, they did a study and they, they showed that vegetable-rich diets were necessary um, to decrease 
um, the risk of coronary artery disease in individuals. Then in 1998, they also showed that um, patients that were placed on a vegetable-rich diet had less than 50% fewer heart attacks than those who didn't. In 2005, they showed that vegetable-rich diets slow the progression of cancer. And later on, um, 2009, they saw that if you had lots of fruits and vegetables, you also decrease the risk of gastrointestinal cancers. And so we can see that vegetables have a lot of benefits to our bodies, and it also helps to reset this set point. And so one of the, the, um, the suggestions that that is made and that we um, have tried to abide by in um, making the changes to our diets that have led to our success um, thus far. And we are hoping to always keep it and that before um, keep on um, having the success is to start with one pound of vegetables per day. Now a pound sounds like a lot, right? A pound of vegetables like, oh my Lord. Vegetables are light, right? Um, they're lightweight. So she's talking about a lot of vegetables. That's a lot. That's exactly a pong, a pong. But if you have bark, I know we before COVID we were doing it, and after during COVID we had to stop, and all, um, we allowed to do it again. Most of the salad bars allow you to weigh to weigh your your salads, right? Yes. And a lot of times when you when you go and check out on the salad joint, you're paying that money for that salad. It's a pound of salad you had. So a large salad is a pound of vegetables. Just to give you an idea, um, so we can eat a pound of vegetables by eating a large salad. Um, protein, if you, if you get a very long cucumber, the 14 inch cucumber, and you cut it up, one of those is, is, is a pound of vegetables. Four tomatoes, six carrots, a small celery, two thirds of a broccoli. So, um, so you can get a pound in. It sounds like a lot when you first hear a pound of vegetables, but you can get it in just by, by, um, by eating these, um, these um, different uh, ways that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. But the emphasis is that each meal should be should have vegetables in it, okay? And, and the goal is not to eat the same vegetables, but to eat as many as you can. Mm -hmm. The more you eat, the more weight you're gonna lose. Yes. Um, and the one pound is where you start because some people don't eat any vegetables at all. So just getting up to one pound is where you start, but that is not the limit. That is, that is not the, the max, that's the limit mm. of what you're gonna do. One pound of vegetables. Um, and when you approach um, two pounds a day, um, you're gonna find that it's gonna be impossible for you to be gaining weight and eating two pounds of vegetables a day because the vegetables fold you. And because you're folding and satisfied, you have all the micronutrients that you needed, you're not gonna have any desire, any cravings. And as a result, you should hopefully um, be able to keep the weight off. And so the point to remember though, is that it has to do with the density of the nutrients that's in the vegetables, right? And so your green leafy vegetables are the best vegetables for you to eat. So that's your kale, your spinach, that's your um, your um, mixed um, veg vegetable salads, your, um, your, your, your bok choy, you know, all of those vegetables there. Those are the ones that you want to eat a lot of. That's, a, that's your, your best, um, nutrient um, dense foods. And as much as possible, eating them raw would be also helpful because you get most of your nutrients that way. But green vegetables in general are good. So, you know, your, your broccoli um, and all the others that are green, those are good. So that's where you, that's the majority of what you want on your plate is the green vegetables. But then the non green vegetables like your cauliflower and stuff, but those are also um, good choices. Um, and then not as not not as good, but still good for you are, are your colorful starchy vegetables. Mm. And the reason why we limit we don't have as much of those is because these also have a lot of carbohydrates mm. in them. Versus the one on the left, got it, got it. there's limited carbohydrates. As a matter of fact, a bag of spinach only have a hundred calories in it. You know, those little bags that you buy, that's only 100 calories. So you can see if you eat all of that, there's not much calories there. Mm -hmm. But when you start getting into your starchy vegetables, then you're gonna get more carbs and therefore more calories. Mm -hmm. And so as much as possible, from the non-greens to the greens to the green leafies, that's what you want when we talk about veggies. And yes, you allow your colorful starchy vegetables, but those you want to, to, to do certain sizes on those, okay? And so this has to do with your um, the, the beets. Um, that would be your... Um, your pumpkin, your yams, your sweet potatoes, those are all so, the starchy so, colorful. So I just need to interject, and I know you're going through the slide, but you know, mm. there are quite a bit of uh, folks that are vegan, and I know I have a community within Team Hope that does a lot of vegetable. Um, and so that that is this is what she's talking about. It's very, very important, guys, because I've had some questions where 
you know, somebody says, well, what about vegans? So vegans can also gain weight based on the type of vegetables uh, they're consuming. You know, vegetables is good, but it's also not good depending on where you are, correct? Correct. That and what I've what I've found sometimes is that you can have a lot, um, especially um, the vegetarian um, people who have tried vegetarian diets. Like I I eat at vegetarian places on the island sometimes, and um, my plate turns out to be a very carb laden plate. Mm. So I'll have, for example, they might have a veggie lasagna, and then you might have um, the uh, the veggie burgers. You know, so they're all good. They're good foods and they're better foods, especially if they're in process. They're not processed, or they're using, but because they have so much starch and carbs in them, mm. they can also increase your sugars and and increase your insulin, etc. So they're good. They're not going to increase it as much as eating um a um, pizza wood mm -hmm. because they have fiber right. but they still do have um starches and, yeah, and starches. carbs so that's the reason for that so those are your nutrient dense foods and so <clears throat> the first goal like i said is to start eating vegetables to eat one pound of one pound a day at the minimum increasing and vegetables can be any kind you know, they can be fresh, they can be frozen, they can be canned, they can be cooked, they can be raw, they can be organic, they can be non-organic. Whatever your budget allows, that's what you do. And I've had people, you know, like when we would go on a Daniel fast at a church, because that's when I actually first started doing this. Um, people would say, well, it's so expensive. Like, you know, that's expensive. Um, that's expensive. And it is true. Eating vegetables, eating health is expensive, but so is seeing Dr. Richardson and buying medications, right? That's very, very and so, so you, um, you're going to have to pick where you're going to spend your monies and, um, and pulling over to, to fast food places and buying a big meal um, for a dollar meal or whatever, those are cheaper ways of getting, but you're not getting foods and you're just killing yourself and causing diseases in the end. So, um, so we do want you to, um, to consider that, but, um, sometimes buying them in the can is cheaper than buying them fresh, you know, so wherever way, whichever way you can get your vegetables, get them. But my favorite would be fresh vegetables spread from the farm that would be ideal but um and as much as possible organic but organic is more expensive than non-organic so if it's not a, anything that um has thin layer um like thin skin those as much as you can should try to be organic but things with thick hard skins they're going to hopefully be protected wash the skins off and you should be fine when it comes to the pesticides and stuff that you're trying to protect yourself from when you're talking about organic versus non-organic so if you're going to eat your vegetables, how are you going to eat your vegetables? You're going to ask me, how am I going to get this done in one day? That's a lot. Well, a little bit throughout the day is one way to do it. Um, you know, this is eating, um, that's, um, um, I just like what I, what I was saying, so, celery. Celery. <laughs> celery, this is celery sticks peanut with some butter. peanut butter. It looks so good. I couldn't remember what it was I, I made there. <laughs> celery sticks with peanut butter, right? Um, but an easy one is to do smoothies because a lot of people do smoothies for breakfast. The problem that a lot of smoothies that I've had patients describe to me what they're putting in smoothies, and the problem is that they're adding too much fruit to their smoothies, and therefore they're making their smoothies very carb rich, very high and spiking the insulin, and therefore not as good for their weight management. And so this smoothie here is a green smoothie, and a green smoothie is pretty much any greens that you have, preferably the leafy ones that I just described, right? You put those in a handful or more. Um, you do your water or your, or, or your coconut water or your almond milk, if, if that's what you choose to um, use, ice. And then you add a fruit for a flavor, but not as, uh, like the, not making it heavy laden in fruit. So you might take four spare, uh, four pieces of uh, pineapple or some, um, some four strawberries or some blueberries or whatever, you know, to, um, to mix with it. And then um, something for seasoning, like um, for flavor, like ginger or um, uh, what you call the thing, cinnamon, you know, anything like that to give it flavor would be, would be um, the thing. So it's the point of the, the fruit is to mask the taste of the greens and to make it taste palatable, but it's not to, to add too much fruit because then you just uh, made it carb laden. Hmm. Lunch, this is the way you can get your vegetables. A nice Carl loves soups. Like he, he give him soup any day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, he'll eat soups. But, you know, just lots of vegetables, hmm. you know, or you can just do a whole salad or a mixture of, um, of greens and other things. Snacks is the next way you can get your, your, your veggies he must send some um some other healthy choices there um and then for dinner um we like to buy these thin fresh quick um, bags uh, as a quick way when we can get to chop it up stuff 
we just buy a bag, stick it in the air fryer. You can microwave these, but we use the air fryer more. And um, go, and in 10, 20 minutes, you have a meal come. Um, you know, and then this is uh, just a, a slew so of different colorful vegetables. You just put them in the um, oven, bake them, and then you, you serve those and you have that as a meal there. So, you know, so you can have veggies. Uh, these are some suggestions where you, uh, where you can have vegetables throughout the day, okay? So, um, so now we have gotten um, the concept of understanding that we want to start eating mainly vegetables. But a lot of us have not, um, have want to be able to get to have our way, um, to have some success in a quick way of getting our success. And so one thing that we have done, and, um, and these come under different titles or different habits, but it's pretty much, we have to reset our metabolism because yes. we have been eating badly you know, these processed foods, et cetera. And now our body has now had a set point that's high and we're trying to bring it back down. Mm -hmm. So we're just trying to reset our metabolism. And so by doing that, we do, um, you know, we did um, some that's, uh, that's detox, right? And uh, what you're trying to do there is you're trying to get all that stuff out of your body. The first time I did a detox, I almost felt like I was going to just pass out, die. <laughs> Not because I wasn't eating food, but because of the withdrawals that my body was experiencing during a detox. And that happened when we were doing a Daniel um, fast at church. Mm -hmm. That time we were not allowed, in, we all allowed vegetable-based foods pretty much as what a Daniel fast, which is what we are um, talking about here. And so during that time, um, I used to, back then I used to drink Cokes and, and sugary drinks and I, I don't drink those anymore. I try not to have them at all in my diet, um, but especially caffeine. So when I went on the detox, I was withdrawing from caffeine and I had the worst nasty headache possible. Mm -hmm. I felt nauseous. Mm -hmm. I, I almost felt like how people think when they're pregnant. You guys might not know what I felt like, but most of the females in the audience would know that. Um, and, um, and I was ready to throw in a towel. I'm like, this is impossible. Um, how can people expect me to eat this way and live this way? But then it also said to me, what have you been doing to your body? that just by spending um, two days of not eating that stuff, that you are feeling this horrible, you know? And so looking at it that way, I realized I'm going to go through it. Just like you have cocaine and different addictions have to go through their withdrawals. And so I went through that's, it. That's actually a very good point. I, I, I like that. Go ahead. Uh, so that's what it is. Very much, you know, I went to a withdrawal. Yeah. And so addiction. That's, I, that's um, and that's what it was. I was addicted to the caffeine and I was addicted to the sugars that those things had. And so I went to the detox, um, the detox. And after about day three or day four, I think Carl, when he did it, what did you feel? Like back to you, having? Yeah, I think it goes up to day four. Mm -hmm. and most, most literature you read says that you can manage through the fourth day, by the fifth day, you feel like a breakthrough. Yeah. And we also had some physical manifestations with, um, we had, we did, the first time we did it, then in fact, we developed masks. There was like um, mass that came on our face when we were they going through the withdrawal mm -hmm. um, of the caffeine and wow. stuff like that thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then lower, lower back pain was the, uh, was the one we actually had to go and research. And a lot of people, there was a few people who said that that was one of the symptoms. But we got a lot of lower back pain around our kidneys. That was also something we experienced. Yes. And so, um, so that was just your body, you know, releasing all those, um, those toxins um, during that time. Um, but the whole point of this detox is to help you break your food addictions. And so there's going cold turkey, you know, is one way. The other way um, is to slowly introduce these things. But right. sometimes, you know, we just want, we, we're ready to change. We just want to change. Um, we, just har we just feel horrible physically, or we have a timeline we need to get this done by, or doctor just gave us a, a bad report, whatever it might be, you know? And so that's what this, this, this part is about. And so after a, a week, you should have uh, more energy, less hunger, and that's how you started to feel. And then as a result of it, you started to see a of this um, change. You see significant rapid weight loss and improve in your health overall. Um, so it was a metabolic reset and, program. In regards to the rapid weight loss, what people must understand uh, with the first week with, with weight loss, there's two things that affect uh, weight loss. When they talk about rapid weight loss, you can see a lot of plans, diet plans actually is trying to accomplish this is um, low carbs actually causes the body to release water. And when you have more carbs, it causes water, your body to hold on to more water. You need more water. And then sodium. And so whenever you reduce sodium and, and carbohydrates in terms of introducing them to the body, one of the first things the body starts doing, you start, it's kind of diuretic. You, you start going to the bathroom more often. As better if you're hydrating now 
and um, and your weight goes down. And people say, oh, I've lost all this weight. But that first initial weight loss that people are actually be championing is actually water weight uh, because of the adjustment in carbohydrates and sodium. Ah. And then, and then remember also, right, that that is exactly what we're doing when we switch over to this reset um, diet. Um, <clears throat> I'm using the word diet, but I don't like to use the word diet because I don't believe in diet. You know, diet, diet makes you really want to die. <laughs> make you feel like you want to die. Um, you know, so that's not the word, but it's actually this, this new way of eating because this is forever. This is a lifestyle change mm-hmm. yes. that we're talking about. That that we're, I mean, like, this is not no fad, quick thing that you're going to do and then go back to how you were doing before. This is no more of the old in with the new um, concept. So when you switch over to eating mainly vegetables, there is no sodium in there, let, except which is the can is the main place that you might get the sodium, sodium. if you're drinking canned vegetables. So Very that's that's the one you want to be cautious with. When Very I said can. cans were allowed, remember they have no sodium. Very I was just high. saying that because sometimes with our pocketbooks, it becomes hard to to want to do this. Fresh, and right. so that's why I said can were allowed, but you want to limit that because of the sodium that's in there. But if frozen vegetables don't have sodium in it um, as much if it does, so that's another option there, right? So um, so because you don't have any um, sodium, except if you use it to season, and then because you weren't in- drinking anything sweet, um, because you know, um, you're not, none of these vegetables are really that sweet per se, right? So all of that is just causing you to detox mm-hmm. because you're not, and then you're not eating any processed foods because you just replace the processed foods mm-hmm. with the vegetables. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're just going to go to that whole detox right there. So by default, that's, that's by default. You you're, to... Right. So that's why you end up with a weight loss because of that. And then the next thing to remember, I mentioned that the calories in these foods are not that high, but they are very high in nutrients. So all your cells are, are very happy. You have no cravings now because every little thing that your, your cell was missing that you couldn't figure out what it was and you keep on eating, trying to get it, you're not getting it in the micronutrients of these greens that you're eating. And so as a result, you, you feel so satisfied. Um, you know, before we came here, we had broccoli and fish. Before Pastor Carl used to preach about that, about my meals. Now look how, look how refreshed and satisfied he looks. Look at those biceps, man. This guy, and that's vegetable. <laughs> He got those from vegetables. You know, like like vegetables. Know. Like I'm, I'm having a hard time keeping anyway. Right. Just, just remember Popeye spinach. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's a very that's a very good point. I like that. We're gonna talk about that too a little bit. Spinach so, yeah, so, uh, so you will do that, okay? So what is this reset program? As I mentioned, um, mm-hmm. mainly vegetables, at least a pound a day, right? I mentioned that. The next thing is protein. Women, you want about three servings, men four servings of protein. But one of these servings, the protein must be a vegetable protein. Um, and then you want um, you want at least some um, uh, fruits. Those are unlimited. But I did point out there that you want to avoid um, avoid dry or canned fruits. And you, anyone knows why I said that? What's wrong with dry with dried and, and canned fruits? Sodium. Um, so the sugar. The sugar. Okay. Um, when you when you do the canned fruits, they usually have a whole kind of syrup added to them. And then when you dry them, all the sugars come out of them. And a lot of those dried fruits are they, they are very concentrated with the sugars because they have dried them all and concentrated it's sugar. Water. Right. And so now you're eating a lot of sugar in a burst. So if I eat an apple, one apple. I would, um, I'm going to get sugar, but I got a five and everything else. When I eat the apple slices that dry, I'm eating a lot more and a lot more sugar is in that. So that's why you want to uh, avoid those, you know, so they're good, but they want to avoid them. The fats, um, well, this is fats like the butter and the margarine. I kind of got you one, one of those, one, seven of those. Mm-hmm. The raw nuts, that's also a good fat. You're going to get a seven of those. And then you want to drink a lot of water. And the reason for drinking a lot of water is that you need to flush that processed foods and toxins out of your body. So our goal has been to do a gallon of water. And um, the gallon sounds like a lot, but the rule is to do half your body weight in water. And so for most of us, it's going to be a gallon anyway, depending on, you know, and half your weight divided, you know, if I'm, if I'm 200 pounds, I'm 100. Not for you. Not for you, it's not going to be. Yes. That. No, the 128 ounces is going to gallon. Right. Right, yeah, but, but that's not half of your body. But correct, but, but it's almost. It's almost a whole body. Yeah, 
but but it, but right but no that but at the beginning when you were doing it you're trying to flush the toxins out correct, correct. and so the minimum is to have a body weight in water that's the minimum and i think that they suggest that you shouldn't drink more than 16 ounces of water within an hour within a certain time frame yeah, correct. Yes, yeah, yes within an hour period so the, there's a lot of technicalities in your kidneys and yes, yes yes but um you know, also the sodium yeah, also, yeah. also diluting your electrolyte yeah. right yeah. that's correct but what i have found actually is um is the water is very easy for me to to drink because um the water is very easy for me to drink because i i drink a uh one of the, this 16 ounces when i wake up in the morning so you already get a 16 ounce there i drink a 16 ounce before i i go to exercise i drink a 16 ounce while i'm while i'm exercising I drink another 16 ounce when i'm finishing exercise. you know so yeah i already got before i'm already by by 10 o'clock in the morning just because of you know how much I drink a lot of water. I pee all day as a result of it, also. But I drink a so lot. So you're continuously water. detoxing. Yeah. So I continue to do it um, because it's it's good. It helps to flush out all impurities. And we are two thirds of our body. You know, sixty seven percent of our bodies there are water anyway. Yeah, so you want to put it back in, and you lose it when you're all day in the hot sun, etc. So you, so nothing is you know it's good to put it back in. And one of the strategies with water is that you can add um, natural ingredients that also fight inflammation. And there are things that actually adds a good taste to water. Cinnamon is fights inflammation. Um, mm -hmm. Lemon, ginger, um, green teas is a, another way you could brew your green tea, add it to your water. You know, slice of lemon or ginger, whatever you, you, you fancy. Um, another one that makes tears like apple cider, your natural apple cider to do um, gala um, slices of apple with um, with cinnamon. Just apple and you know, gala works better. Uh, as one of the apples, but apple with um, cinnamon infused, um, infused, infused water, in, in, yeah. infused. You create that 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 flavor. And it tastes the cinnamon tastes sweet, uh, but it actually helps in terms of also fighting inflammation. In well, terms of changing the taste of your water for those who struggle with drinking the, the plain the, water. The plain water. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, also um, there's this uh, this other product um, that's called MIO that that people have added also to it. But you know, I'm trying to move away from processed stuff. So, but you know, that's a, that gives you a flavor of it, like tastes like a soda. So you kind of get that strawberry flavor or whatever, and give you a, a flavor. The other thing that has helped me, and I do a lot of it still, is um is um is sparkling waters because it, it, I used to crave the the fizz. I crave I crave the caffeine of soda, and I crave the fizz. And so by doing a sparkling water now with my meals, I can still feel like I'm drinking a, a Coke or whatever. <laughs> in my, in my, question. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. They have questions so, with this one. All right. So we were going to run through the slide. I don't know how much more yeah. that has left um, before we feel the questions, but it seems like we need to feel some of these questions on Facebook. Thank you, viewers, yeah. for logging in. Um, I'm not sure how many uh, viewers got there on Zoom, but um, mm -hmm. you can, you can just, I'll stop the screen for a sec. Um, but we want to feel some of these questions because it's been what 30 minutes since we started. And so we want to make sure we, we're paying attention to you guys and your and your feedback, because that's very, very important to us. So there's a question on, on, on Facebook doc that uh, Daphne Fleming Williams asks, if I were to drink a green smoothie daily, would that suffice? Um, so you're trying to get a pong of, um, you're trying to get, hey, auntie, by the way, that's my aunt. Oh, she is. Okay. <laughs> uh, you're trying to get a pound of, um, you're trying to get a pound of vegetables, right? And so the green smoothie um, would not necessarily give her the pound of, of um, the pound of vegetables there. Mm -hmm. So then it would not suffice. But if she, you know, walled, uh, measured out the pound, and she put it in and then throughout the day, like I think about three of them would probably give her the pound um, throughout the day, then yes, it would be sufficient. Because the goal is just to get the vegetables in. Right, and one of the things we want to be careful of because um, the magic ingredient in vegetables is fiber. Yeah. And there's a, a mechanical processing in terms of making smoothies where they remove the fiber from the juice um, and that's bad because you want to maintain the fiber with the juice and because that is what helps balance and level out insulin. But if I, but the smoothie would have the fiber, so it would be mechanically already disrupted by the blender. So you're correct, but it would still, the juicing, juices will raise the fiber, but the smoothie, they kept in the blender so they can still get some fiber. Okay. So yeah. I guess, but some people may think juicing is the same, but it, correct. You, yeah. you want to keep the fiber 
with your your food and so even as you make the smoothie you don't want to use a process that extracts the fiber from the juice wonderful so uh i have quite a bit of notes that i took mm -hmm. i don't know if you want to continue no I'm, I'm pretty much um yeah so the only last part there about the um the metabolic um the, the reset that i was mentioning was um that you know you're gonna do the, the the vegetables as I mentioned. The only other thing that I wanted to what did the start screen shift? Yeah, not this one. Right. So the only other thing I wanted to mention is that it is critical that you don't adjust the guidelines to your habits. And that is something that I did at the beginning. Um and therefore led to me not having my success at the beginning. Because I love love coffee in the morning yeah. with sugar oh. and not sugar with crema and listen i when i did this detox i said well i can have coffee caffeine is natural i'm allowed it comes from a bean it's natural right mm -hmm. and i can still have my coffee but the crema was my the killer my killer and so what the i did killer. at first that's was, a what you did twice tonight what i did at first was i cut back how much crema was putting in so before, as Carl, Carl doesn't make tea for me anymore. He brings me the crema because I would not want him to make it because he makes it sweet. So I'm like, just one teaspoon. So you know the little one that you buy from the uh, International Delight? Those are ones that I'm not promoting a brand, but that's one I used to love, right? So we would um, buy them in the little individual um, containers and I would open just one and put it in. And that's all I would do. And I'm like, why am I not having success? And it was because I am still trying to adjust my old habits and put it into my new habit here. Um, and that little bit of sugar and cream that was coming in my crema was enough to keep me, to prevent from resetting my, my uh, and I was plateaued forever. Mm -hmm. He's shrinking and shrinking. And I'm like, I do more than you. I eat better than you do. How is this possible? And my, that was mine was that trying to keep that, that cream in my sugar and cut back to the limited amount that, you know, that it's made it palatable. <laughs> um, and then the day when I decided, okay, if I need my coffee, which I do just because I still love caffeine, uh, I'm gonna go black. The first time I drank black coffee was horrible. Then I thought here, you add a little bit of, um, of salt, what that kind of salt is that you like, Himalayan yeah, salt, salt, different little things I tried. And then eventually like, okay, if that's nasty, then I shouldn't drink it. Then I started drinking it again, but now I just, and I drink it, I enjoy it now, but I had to go up with a kind of coffee because I find certain coffees just don't taste good, um, black, but better quality coffees do taste a little better. But it's up to you. But the point is though, that it's critical that if you're gonna get a metabolic reset, follow the program. You cannot get a metabolic reset and try to make it Reva's version of a metabolic reset because you're gonna be stagnating yourself and making it very impossible to, to see the success. I'm not impossible, but you're slowing your, your success down. And so don't adjust the guidelines to your habits, but rather adjust your habits to the guidelines. Mm -hmm. So the thing is that when you're doing your reset, there's no artificial or sweetened drinks, none, zero. Gatorade zero is an artificial drink and it's sweetened. No, it's sweetened with artificial sweetener, so no. Um, Coke zeros, um, you know, whatever you can think of, that's just no, it's water, water, water. That's your drink during the time. If you want uh, something sweet, you do a smoothie and that's your drink, right? And then the next thing is the healthiest foods available is what you want to eat as much as possible. So like I said, you know, you, you, you're going to go with your budget, but as healthy as you can. And then the last thing is that if you're hungry while you're doing this, then you're not doing it right. Because this, when you're eating this way, you're not supposed to be hungry because you're full of vegetables. Right. And so, um, so, so if you're finding yourself, you're hungry, you're not eating enough, you're not eating enough vegetables, you could eat unlimited vegetables, it's not going to affect you. There'll be no problem at all with, um, there, there'll be no, there won't be any, um, there won't be any problems there if you try to, with your weight by eating excessive um, vegetables. So you don't have to worry about that. And then the last thing was that, um, The last thing is that that um, a good good nutrition is a lifetime endeavor, and so um, like I said, you can move slowly by just adding the vegetables and starting there, moving forward, or you can you can do it um, by going quickly and doing a nutrition reset. Um, but the reset point will be lowered eventually, and that's the point that we want to do. All right, and that's all for my presentation. Awesome.
Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, one of the things, um, like she was talking about coffee, um, what Angela sell her back, uh, Reba used to practice like, I, I used to say coffee was a way of numbing the starvation. And I always tell her she wasn't eating enough. And mm -hmm. um, when you're not eating enough, it also uh, interferes with your progress on several levels because the mind is, is trained or programmed by God to preserve life in your body. And so when the brain believes it's not getting enough food or food is not available, it automatically adjusts your metabolic rate. Which is and, what we talked about with and, the same set point. Yes. And, and so that's why um, two ways mm -hmm. to make the brain feel like that's not happening is hydration. That's why they encourage you to drink a lot of water um, because most of the time when you're hungry, you're actually thirsty. And the other thing is to eat um, high foods, high in nutrition, but low in calories. And so then the brain will like, oh, I'm, I'm getting nutrients, I'm getting fed. And it keeps the metabolic rate up. But with coffee, the creamers, if you look at it, one tablespoon of those creamers was 35 calories. And so two tablespoons, which is what it takes just about to start turning it the other white, uh, would be almost 70 calories. And so the fix that we came up with that was two things. One, don't consume what you can't measure. And so instead of using um, the big bottles where you just pull and kind of guesstimate that that was about two tablespoons, most times we're wrong. We begin to use the individual creamers and to use the one that says it's only 10 calories in a container. So when you do two of those, um, it actually turns it white, but the taste is almost free of sugar. And so then you know that the coffee, which is about five calories, and the two individual creamers, which is 10 calories, only about 25 calories, you've just taken your coffee from about 100 and 150 calories um, that you're making at home and make it up a 25 calorie drink. Um, another thing that I've done with a lot of success um, was to make it a protein coffee. And meaning, I like Reba says a lot of creamer. And so I realized that when I would use the amount of creamer, which was about two tablespoons, 70, I would add 70 calories, or uh, if I was a little bit more generous, anywhere from 70 to 100 calories, I did. I realized in the last couple of months uh, or maybe a year, I started using a, a metal by which I would get uh, premier protein uh, shakes, either the chocolate or the vanilla, or the Ensure Max protein shakes, which is about 150 calories. And I would use that as my creamer. So instead of just getting this processed carbohydrates, I would actually be increasing my protein as well with my coffees by using that as the creamer in my coffee. So my coffee is five calories. I'm taking this, this um, drink that's about 150 calories, 140, and adding one four to a half of it with each cup of coffee. I've just increased my protein with each coffee to about um, anywhere from 15 to 18 grams of protein. And protein with fiber not only keeps you satisfied, but the body works harder in terms of raising your energy in your body, to process protein. So you're actually burning calories to, to consume your coffee. Right, so, but let me clarify, when he is drinking this, is not during his metabolic reset. Hmm. Just to clarify, because during the metabolic reset, you're not drinking anything, you're not, you're not adding those. Um, that's it, that's right. it. That's, that's, a that's great, his maintenance. Um, that's a very good Right, he's right in maintenance, so that's why. No, but that actually helped me lose weight. Right, I know, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying that. I'm, I'm saying what I've done personally, you know, it's not, it actually helped me lose weight. That this is not, I know the metabolic reset now that those are different diets, not but I didn't, I didn't follow it to the T. So one of the things I did with my coffee, because I drank coffee, was that I was, instead of making it um, carbohydrates laden with processed creamers, I changed it and made it a protein. No, I understand coffee. that, but I was just trying to clarify to them that that's not part of a metabolic reset. So I just wanted to do, do, oh, no, no, to do just, the clarification I'm, there I'm, with I'm, that statement. I'm just sharing yeah. with them like, Yours, what right, you have done. Right, my approach. And that is good. That is good because yeah. one of the things that we that that we want to clarify is that everybody has an individual journey here, right? right. And this information is somewhat well, it's general, mm -hmm. right, Doc? This is very general. Pastor had great success making some tweaks. To some of the uh, uh, processes, <coughs> excuse me, some of the processes there, and so let's let's not confuse his success with the actual no explanation that the doc has put out here for us. He's had great success, obviously. We can tell from that, 
and we're going to probe him a little bit more on his success story. But before we jump into him, I want to see Zoom. Do you guys have any questions? I don't see anything on the chat. You guys can unmute your mic and just probe us. Um, Doc has quite a wealth of information. I have some notes. See if your questions match up to any of mine or some of these notes that I've taken along the, the way where the doctor experience life. When you speak of inflammation, what what is that really? I mean, what is inflammation in the body? I, I hear that being said more than on more than one occasion during this discussion. So it, it goes to different levels um, from a cellular level, um, as well as a manifestation for us clinic, um, clinically, like inflammation cellular, like, you know, like with a line of the cells being inflamed that causes increased risk of clots, et cetera. But then it also goes to the level of, of external manifestation where people are having a lot of joint pain, a lot of back pain, and just, just totally just uncomfortable overall. Uh, and it's all because their body is just un all inflamed from all the toxins that are coming from the foods that they have eaten. It also manifests a lot in the gut, so that's why you see people yeah. promoting uh, probiotics because a lot of inflammation is uh, around the gut, the digestive tract. Right, so you can't digest your food now because your your whole system is just all inflamed. In terms of absorbing the nutrients. Right. So, so really, uh, uh, guys, is there any more questions there from Zoom? Thank you, Chris. Appreciate that. It's a very good question. Any more? Any more questions from the Zoom audience? I have another question. Seems as though um, when you approach 60, even though you might be eating healthy, why is it around the tummy for men? We grow this tummy. Why? What What caused this? Hmm. I see even men who gym in and stuff, they gain this gut too. And, gym you know, after. Head, <laughs> heading up in the gym. Gym to be after, Chris. That's a joke. <laughs> so, you know, there, there, one of the things that we have um, learned and we share with our um patients is that your abdomen, um, the, the, the way that you collect there, that's actually a sign of metabolic, um, a metabolic syndrome, which is the same issue that we're talking about here. And it's, it's, um, it's a bad place to gain weight because it put pressure on your heart, right? Because mm -hmm. everything is in that capacity. Yes. So now this I've extended. So you put a pressure on your heart, you increase your risk of sleep apnea, et cetera. So it's actually not, you know, so, so something you want to work against is gaining weight there. But it's also um, the only way that's corrected is through the kitchen. So, um, because it's, um, that, that's visceral fat, that's, the, um, you know, the, that's, the, that's way past the adipose um, fat, yeah, sorry, that you're <laughs> depositing there. Um, and it's usually also a, a reflection, sorry, of the visceral fat, the fat around your organs can also be, um, be, yeah, be yeah. affected as right. a result, what I meant to say. So, um, so, so it's very concerning when you have the weight there, but, um, but it has to be a change in the diet. Yes. Um, because that's the only way you can get that, that down. We can do a lot of uh, planks and sit ups and yeah, stuff which that, is what we are doing. Minimal, in the gym. Minimal, minimal. But um, yeah, to get through that layer, it has to be it has to be um, taken off. And that's what I mentioned last week that a pound of fat is two, three thousand five hundred calories. That's how much calories yes. is exactly. uh, manifested yeah. with a pound of fat. I mean, and so it. to get that off would mean that you, if you're just doing a, a, a diet switch, you'd have to have a negative of three uh, of 3,500 calories a um, deficit a week in order to lose that pound of fat. So you, so, so that's why I said it has to come from the kitchen. Right. And so, and so, so Richardson, uh, to your question, why is that? that? That's an individual question for each and every individual because what I've seen is people go to the gym after the fact, right? Uh, the, the great pastor here, he had that stone. At one point, he was in the gym with me with that stomach, um, but he didn't lose that stomach in the gym, right? And uh, I need to clarify that. Doc made it very clear: the kitchen, the diet. That is, and when we say the diet, we're not talking about a Jenny Craig. Yeah. We're not talking about a, a weight loss program. We're talking about changing the way you eat, right? right? Um, when you eat, what you eat, how you eat it. You know, all this conversation about vegetables. That's a, that's that's one way. Fasting, we talked about fasting, we talked about insulin effect, all those things affect that stomach in terms of getting it down. Once it's up, you know, that's years of poor choices in terms of eating. And the, the, the body cannot digest the amount of times that we eat. So it stores, right? And that's where that tummy comes from. So uh, hopefully that answers your question, Chris. Is there uh, any more questions? Oh, no, I don't want to add to that because that's a very good question. It's something I researched for myself and it actually happens because of what happens with the body. A lot of things that actually goes to reproduction and also attraction. 
begins to decline with age. One of them is uh, okay. testosterone mm -hmm. declines with age because after a while the body goes into a different season. And so you see um, with all the research, it trends down. Um, so that's one of the things that happened. And there's several other things, hormonal as well, um, it is happening and um, cortisol goes up because of the stress that people carry in that season of their life as well as um, the, it, the, the sleep patterns is, is affected. So that is being affected. And so there's things that are happening on those um, levels that is that is contributing to the weight that you can begin to adjust both with the nutrition and also with activity. Right. Um, and so you will notice that they will say like, as you get older, one of the exercises that encouragement to do is like squats, because as you work out, it increases testosterone, actually it increases as well as the human growth hormone increases with exercise. And one of the most effective exercises when you work the, um, the thigh muscles, the quads, um, so you see they tell you to do a lot of um, squats because you work the, 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 the quads um, with the squats, it actually drives up testosterone. So it helps you naturally. That's one of the natural ways to increase testosterone as well as the human growth hormone in the body. That's something to watch for. But there's a, a lot of things that you have to, that is being affected for men. There's um, a decline in vitamin D, zinc, and magnesium. Um, those are things that you have to watch. They are happening on the micronutrient level, but they're also things that will affect um, those type, type of fat deposit around your midsection. So, um, so improve sleep, looking at your micronutrients, um, as well as um, managing some of those hormonal changes mm -hmm. um, in natural ways. And you can do it through diet as well as increased activity. And, and that is... Mm -hmm. from the horse's mouth he's done this this is not he's not a, he's not a, a, a trainer he's not a um a dietitian he, he's not a nutritionist he's not that he's had this challenge chris uh he's not over 60 he's not close to even 60 but he is <laughs> but he's he's tried what he's telling you this is not me give my paper to read and he says this to you guys facebook zoom He's tried this. He's had great success. He's still, I think he's at, River calls it his... His age? No, oh, his, his maintenance. Well, his maintenance. He, but he reset his new goal again, right? So yeah, I, I reset my new goal. So, he reset his goal. so just want to clarify that. He's not just talking. And, and, um, my, and it also was confirmed by a urologist when I visited a specialist in Houston, Texas. Yeah. And one of the things we don't understand that even makes it worse, that for men, as you begin to deposit um, weight around your stomach, um, that shows an increase in estrogen level. So your, your estrogen level actually went up is why you're depositing that fat. And, and belly fat takes the testosterone you begin to produce through food and other ways and convert it to estrogen. So it's compounding the problem. And so that way you have to have a multi-layer approach um, to reversing it, reversing the hormonal balance between estrogen testosterone, and then there's another one called protestrogen, I think if I'm saying that right. Those are the three hormones that begins to affect um, weight distribution in the body. When testosterone goes up, your body proportionally to go back to that V um, kind of profile where you begin to um, shrink in the waist and start carrying more um, muscular development uh, in your upper body and, and in your legs. Wonderful. Thank you, Pastor, for that. Thank you, Pastor, for that. Uh, so, notes. Um, I don't see any more questions on, on Zoom, so I'm going to just move on with some notes that I took. Um, so, Doc, you, 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 and by the way, guys, you know, we're, we're coming close to our time, but we're going to push just an extra. It's 7.24. We usually done at 7.30. We're going to push it a little bit more because I want to address some of these notes that I made for the Doc so she can make sure clarify this for me. Um, one of the things I took away from your discussion earlier with your presentation was preparation. Preparation is key. You can do, you know, we can suggest veg diets and or we can use veg changes in our diets. Um, but how we prepare those vegetables is equally important, right? I mean, you talk about the starchy veggies and you talk about the green leaf veggies. But if you take, a, let's say, kale, uh, that is a, a harsher, more vegetable. So you, people usually saute it which is they, they, they put it in a frying pan with some oil. What kind of oil? Do you put butter in there? How much salt do you put on that? Because we all want to get that taste, right? And, and I think with vegetables, it's not so much about the taste, right? It's about the benefit. 
Correct right. me if I'm wrong, Leda. Yeah, and so um, what I've found is for us um, personally, um, when we do the shopping, we do the prepping one time. And so like on Sunday, Carl went to shop, he loved the shop. <laughs> yeah, I've been to the grocery <laughs> store with him. Yeah. He, he, yeah. he, he owns like, shops actually. No, but... he, he loves the shop because his wife doesn't love the shop, so I have to, oh, you know, that's say that's by he default. Loves, yeah, <laughs> by default, yeah. yeah my wife like, doesn't like yeah, the shop. It's like it's a family thing. It's a sister know? thing. <laughs> yeah, Carl yeah. and I, buddy. Uh, anyway, we're not gonna get into that. So, so he ahead. went shopping and he came back with it with the fish, for example. Um, and he he passed them, he seasoned them up one time, Kane and seasoned them up, and he passed them in for the week. And so now when we're cooking, we don't have to defrost the whole thing. We already have it um, thing. And the same thing with the vegetables. Well, vegetables are easier for us to cut up um, at, on the go. But for some people, you know, it's a little harder. So when it comes yes, to, to wash them, from time they come, cut the, the, um, the, the stem off or whatever you want to do and parcel them out or just put them in, um, you know, dry them and put them in containers. We've got these real nice containers that keep them fresh for mm -hmm. a long time, a longer time. Mm -hmm. And so we just put them in there. We take them out of the original container, clean them, wash them and put them in there. So now when we're ready for them, yeah, you know, you just take up as much as you want and you put them. Stuff that spoiled quickly, freeze them works well. So you can freeze the spinach, you can freeze the, the um the strawberries or whatever. If you don't, if you find it going, you know, that you're gonna buy them and you want them to last a little longer, if depending on how you're gonna cook them, you can freeze them. Some things when you freeze it all taste good, so you wouldn't want to do that. But yes, preparation is it makes it easier because a lot of times people will find that because it takes more time, they want to pull up to a fast food place because it's faster and easier than it is to to get home and cook. But if you already do, done some ahead of time, cut up your onions, cut up everything. So when you come in, you just add them in, it helps. Like, yeah. what else would you add? And again, so I want to make a note is that doc is a doctor's, which means the schedule is ridiculous. And oftentimes she's on call. And Carl is, uh, you know, I think he graduated from, from an attorney stage to a pastoral, which is even more work in my opinion, because you got to deal with challenges of, of so many. Um, and so this speaks to time and preparation. So obviously they've made a sacrifice to prepare from the day to grocery shop, which is huge. Some of you guys can probably relate to this because of your careers and your professional careers. And so uh, take, take a, a page from the pastor's book and, 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 and the doctor's book that preparation in this way could also be very helpful. Next question, Doc. So we talk about detoxing and the withdrawals of that. You've had those challenges with with that, and, and I know quite a bit of us, we've been talking about this with the fasting uh, uh, approach um, to this weight loss or this healthier living. Uh, we know that comes with withdrawal, with withdrawals because we talked about it with Dr. Lewis, uh, a 16 hour fast is where the body goes into autophagy, right? Where it begins to self eat from the fat inside. And, and so in that 16 hours, you go, wow, 16 hours is a lot, and it is. And so doc, explain to the our viewing audience again, those withdrawals and how do we deal with them? Because that is real, right? That is real. Yes, where we're, the light bulb goes off, we get that we need to make changes, but making that change is, is difficult, right? So doc, I want you to explain these headaches, these, these hunger, hunger pangs, and even Pastor, you could jump in if you like, how did you guys work? How, how were you guys able to deal with those things? So, so remember um, throughout the, the prior life, you are eating a lot of of um, of um, chemical laden foods, mm -hmm. which um, have a certain effect on your body, and so your body was accustomed to that effect. Yes. Whether it was a high from the sugar, yep. um, which is very addictive, or if it, um, you know, etc. Right? Or with a caffeine high or whatever. So now you are no longer giving that to your body, and so you're you had all these receptors that had this on it, and now it's not getting it, and it wants it. So that's when you get that withdrawn feeling. And so, but it's a temporary feeling, right? So you can look at it as like, you know, um, someone who, who smokes and they want, they, they have a craving because they, they're accustomed to getting that satisfaction from the tobacco. So now they no longer have it, the craving is gonna be there. So now what you're trying to do is to, so, so you, you have to go through it. It's just a natural it's a process. process. Yes, yes, yes. You have to go through it. But once you've gone through it, once you don't reintroduce it, 
you won't have to go back through it again. Mm. And so I, so that's why I said at that time, I was like, if the food made me feel this horrible and not having it, why would I want to give myself back into have to go back through it? And all those people say, well, I won't go to the detox again. But remember, you are doing the detox in order to get yourself to good health. Right, right. And so, so that's what I would say. You could go ahead. There's anything you want to add to that? Well, the only thing I would add, and I know we was very strict. <laughs> Discipline. Yeah. Discipline. We were, we were, Let's we were, change our life. We were very disciplined. There you go. I, uh, I'm a Richardson. I, um, I believe in working smart sometimes and not hard. And so I would look for what is the trigger? What is the underlying principle that is driving all of these conversations? And again, with the detail, now we're talking about all this increase in, in fruit, um, you increase in fiber. Uh, but when you first start doing it, looking at a bowl of vegetables and trying to eat through it, you normal have like a, a, a gag. <laughs> this is a real talk reaction about. that happens in you, you know. I mean, there's a rebellion that comes up when you're faced with a bowl of you know, a pun of um, stuff. And so one of the ways that I was able to gauge into it, I went to the food association and started saying, what, what is it I'm trying to measure in a day? And it said mm -hmm. for men, you should try to at least um, get about 25 to 38 grams of fiber a day. Women should get about 25 to 28. The average American, based on their process that gets less than 10 grams of fiber a day. And so I want, to, I want to be able to reset my fiber even as I'm working towards my goal of eating more vegetables. And one of the ways I did that, because it reminded me of Tang, uh, was to take Metamucil orange and add it to water. Three tablespoons of Metamucil orange. That was my how I break my fast when I did intermittent fasting. So at 12 to the one, I'm drinking my big 16.9 ounce water in a glass with my three tablespoons of Metamucil. It's like my hit of tang, um, but I'm getting my fiber. That would increase hydration and rest. It made me regular. So at 4 to 5 in the morning, I'm getting, I'm getting a glorious alarm. Goes off my body, taking me to the restroom, starting off the day nice and light, um, and it really helps. And that <laughs> then gets me acclimated to the vegetables. And so that would be my um, shortcut because I'm saying, what, what am I trying to achieve? And, and I, <laughs> this is not doctor approved, but I'm trying to get to my 25 to 38 grams of fiber a day. And each tablespoon has in about five to six grams, um, soluble and insoluble fiber. Um, they're different. You got Benefiber, fiber, you got other products. But I use Metamucil because I like the orange taste. It tastes like tang. Throw in my three tablespoons, whip it up, drink it i'm like oh so satisfying i got my hit of fiber anything else i do for the rest of the day whether it's spinach broccoli just adding to my uh, my what i call it my set point my foundational entry point which is about 15 to 16 grams of fiber yeah. so so that's what I, that's one of the strategies that i and then the other thing um which is the reason for drinking all the water also is that these are toxins that are being released in your body and i think i mentioned that earlier when i was talking so you have the addictions but you know, like from the caffeine and the sugar, and then you have the toxins that came from the food that you're eating. So those toxins are now no longer attached to your body and they're mm -hmm. being released mm -hmm. and they have to go somewhere. So that's what's giving you the pain and all the discomfort that you're having. So for those, you just have to get them out, um, you know, and so you flush them through. Yeah. So that's, that, that's the reason for drinking all the water also is to flush that through and water fills you too. Yeah. And, and again, so she, she hit on my next note, my next point, which is addiction. Uh, one of the things we talked about last week in, in our conversation, and we also talked about it too with Dr. Lewis in the fasting conversation, the cellular health. When we're talking about addiction to food, it, it, you know, you don't have to be overweight. You, you, do, you do not. And I also want to make that very clear. I can be addicted, and I am addicted to certain foods, but I have, like Reva, I'm disciplined, right? So when we go out for dinner, I would sacrifice something for something else because I know I, want, I can't have both. So I have to discipline myself, but the addiction to food, doc, and you know, our cells are happy when we detox, when we clean our body out, because that addiction is attached to our cells, correct? Mm -hmm. Which then goes to our brain, which then tells our body we need to have this. This is a craving, right? We have to have this craving. I had a lot of pregnant women talk about that. I, I'm not gonna go. There. I'm not gonna go there in the pregnant woman uh, uh, aspect, but I know that these cravings and these addictions are tied together. And that there's a way that we can we can deal with that, and that would be detoxing, correct? Right. Because a lot of the times, the uh, well, the a lot of times your body is missing something, 
And so the only signal it get, that it gives out is a crave. That's like, you know, something is wrong. That's what your body says. I need this, I need it. So a lot of times um, when you are going through your withdrawals and you are feeling like you want to have um, sugar, it might be salt. And I think, um, um, what's his name? Um, the first Ed. guy, Ed, was yeah. thinking about that. Yeah. So sometimes you might, you might be having these, these signals like, okay, you need something sweet, you need something sweet. But it's actually you're missing the salt or you know um, a different electrolytes of your body. So replacing and keeping your electrolyte balance, you know, Ed gave you the whole lecture on that earlier is a, is another thing to to um to consider. But um stuff like like sugar, sugar is very, very addictive. Yes. Um it's they worse. have shown studies where they have had rats choose between cocaine and sugar, and the rats choose the sugar. You know, so that's how addictive it is, you know, and so, um, so, 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 and because it releases, you know, the, the dopamine um, and the pleasure centers the dopamine, in your brain, yes, yes, yes. and so that's, that's a high, that's, you know, that like you're getting, signals, and so now you need to reverse that, and so even like Carl is saying, looking at a, a bowl of, um, of uh, vegetables and saying, I have to eat that in the place of a, of a cake, they, they, they don't even match that, that pleasure center, right? Um, but, but as, um, but you can, you know, start to, to, to give the body natural sugars like from fruits and that is still sweet. Like he used a little, um, the, metamizel. the, the metamizel fiber the flavor thing It's still sweet, right? So you're getting it, you're getting it um, there. It's nowhere close to the sugar that your body's accustomed to, but at least you're getting something. So those are some ways that you can help with that. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So the next note, guys, uh, any questions, any feedback, anything you want to share before I jump to the next move? Because we're actually pushing this a little longer than we normally have because it's so, so informative. Um, and I think, you know, there, there are a lot of unanswered notes and questions that I have. Any any questions? Facebook, uh, I'm keeping an eye on you here. That's why my head is down uh, continuously because I have no one monitoring. So I'm monitoring both feeds. Any other questions from Zoom? You want to unmute? You want to you wanna ask a question? No? Okay. So sustainability, doc. We talk about this lifestyle approach, this change. Um, somebody who's been trying and falling down, getting up, falling down, getting up. Sustainability is a challenge for them because you know the light bulb moment may have happened, but then they're not able to sustain the change that's necessary for where they are. And I've known quite a bit of individuals uh, in Team Hope that have had that challenge. And Team Hope provides that environment, guys. This is. This is right here. This is information, real life, real life. Um, but sustainability is a really challenge for a lot of us, making this vegetable diet change. Sustainability, this lifestyle change that, uh, I mean, is there any modifications that um, you can offer? Because when I do my workouts, I offer a modified plank. You know, you go down on your knees, you go down on your feet. So, yes. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's that's um, that's to clarify. There, there were two different things that I presented. The first was the pound of vegetables, mm -hmm. and then the second was getting the person who wants to quickly see some results. Um, when I start, when you start eating a pound of vegetables, you're not going to get as fast a result as the person who does the metabolic reset. Mm -hmm. That's the only difference. Very, so, very so the um, the modified version would be. To, to introduce each of these changes um, gradually mm. for the person who can do it all one time. Mm. So the, the metabolic reset thing is all one time. You throw it in, you no know sugars, no carbs, no everything, you know, just vegetables. That's what a metabolic reset is. Um, vegetable and protein, and of course the carbs, but the healthy carbs, et cetera. Right. But, um, but when you're doing a, um, a lifestyle and you want, you know, you're like, okay, I don't care so much about the scale, so to speak, but I want to do this because I know my health depends on it. What can I do? Right. Then you would start with one thing at a time. Right. So for example, the first thing you would have chosen was this month. And then once you add it, you keep it. You don't drop right. it. Right. So this month, I'm just going to work on trying to, to intermittently fast every day, do, to eat 16 hours. Uh, so, sorry, eat eight hours a day, fast for 16, 16 hours. hours. But when I'm eating, I'm going to be mindful to eat healthy choices. This is, this is what I'm going to okay? do. Okay. Right. So this is, these are the healthy things. I'm not, I'm going to try not to stop and, and get an ice cream anymore or every day. And I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to get any soda drinks or whatever you add to it. That would be your first step. Then the second week, the second month would be, I'm going to start with a pound of vegetables, which like I said, is very simple from adding this a one long cucumber, 
uh, fourteen inch cucumber or a, a, a lot salad. That's where you would start. Or doing the green smoothies and trying to get a pound of vegetables in that. After you've gotten your pound of vegetables, then you're going to try to increase it to, to most of your meals in vegetables, you know? Mm -hmm. So you can do it in that step, step and you will get a success. It will, and it's actually some for some people it's even better because they like you know like they're not having a full change of their whole life and one day just mean we turn upside down right. and they don't have like a quick like set point and they got to get a change right, right away right. that's actually the, the easier most sustainable way of doing it wonderful so one at a time and then the next month you will take out the sugars and the next month you'll start adding some nuts you know like you just gradually work your way wonderful so you've had this challenge of sustainability right i've known him i've been with the church since 2012 11 or 12 i've lost track and in that, in these past 10 years, I've watched him, like we talk about, follow and get up, follow and get up, because he really wanted to make the change. Now, when we talk about the sustainability, you knew what you needed to do in the beginning. You knew what you needed to do 10 years ago when I joined the church. And this is even, probably even before I got to the church. So in this period, I got the same thing with you, but I'm asking because he, uh, he, He's continuously on a pulpit, and he was talking about bacon. He don't talk about it anymore. And if he does, it's it's not like something he craves. He just says something and it goes away. But before, if you guys know him, he would talk about bacon for a bit. The holy heart. And the holy heart. Yes, he puts a name to it. Explain to us this sustainability and how you arrive to being able to now. I mean, you're counting calories, quite frankly. I've sat and I've ate with him. Uh, and I'm, 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 you know, I've been monitoring him. And sometimes when I see certain stuff on his spirit, I say, hey, hey, I don't say much. I just give him that look and he knows. But explain to the audience this sustainability and how you were able to overcome this, this feat. Yeah. Um, and when you read so much material about it, 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 it makes it so complex, but it's simple on mindset. And I think I had to move away from uh, focusing on weight loss for weight loss. Um, mm. and really changed my mindset that I was going to embrace a health, healthier lifestyle principles. I actually, in my journal, wrote down nine principles for good health that I began to apply to my everyday life. And the two that um, actually, in phase one, that actually began to help me even with my um, adjustments and sugars and nutrition um, was rest and, and, and hydration and water drinking more water and getting more sleep. Um, they actually did studies that prove the reason we consume so much sugar is that we are sleep deprived. We are only getting four to five hours when we should get about seven and a half to eight hours of sleep. And uh, what we're trying to compensate from is that the energy that is produced in our bodies and in our cells from rest, adequate rest, um, we're, we're actually masking it and augmenting it or supplementing it with sugars mm. to keep us driven. Um, throughout the day, um, as well as caffeine. And it, it is true, uh, when you're rested, it takes away agitation, it, take, um, it increases mental focus, it actually increases energy. And so when we're starting to talk about intermittent fasting, when you are adequately rest, you, you don't really feel hungry if you're drinking water until one, two in the afternoon, because the body is that well um, supplied in terms of being nourished from your rest. And so um, those are just some aspects of the mindset is beginning to um, see some principles that I would like to guide me to my sunset years. And one of that was getting more rest. Uh, it reduced our television time. So we have better TVs in our house and we watch them less. Uh, we actually have them mounted on wall like furniture. <laughs> because by the time we get home, have dinner, what go, do you call that? go in our bed, you call that something. go in our bed in pajamas and we're having conversations. Before we fall asleep, nine. And so we're like old folks, you know, nine, That's nine young thirty. Folk thing, honey. <laughs> um, you know, we're we are trying to get to sleep by 10 30 so that we can be up by six to start our day to exercise, to do our meditations and our morning um, I call it our minor morning board meetings where we were reminded of every um to do chore like pay the mortgage and other stuff. So that's an accountability that needs to get yeah. done. Yes. Yeah, and, and I think that's that's one of the things that has helped is um is that accountability and like you know like like for example if like for me it's the nuts he's like Reba yeah. um so my two things were coffee and nuts yeah nuts was hard okay weakness yeah. um, that was your weakness well they actually were, nuts are good right nuts I mean, are good you know they're good food right calorie dense. Calorie dense. Calorie dense. Ah, <laughs> so that was the good. challenge 
And so I would drink a cup of coffee and eat nuts and I'm good for the whole day till he's get a chance to bring me something to eat. And so, um, so I, I would just do that. But of course, they, that's not the only nutrients your body needs. And so it's not the good thing. So he'd be like, we were, well, just not, you know, I brought those nuts to the whole month and the whole weekend, they're already done or whatever it is. And then other times he'd buy me like that as a treat, you know? So, so, you know, so, so we help each other in, in that regard. But there was a question here about, about the Metamucil. Yeah, well, yes, yeah, he tries yeah. to use the sugar-free um, products as much as possible when he's using it. So it is a, a sugar-free um, version that he's choosing. And then, um, it, well, you know, Metamucil is not a laxative. So it's, it's just a fiber. Lot. So you should not, your body should not get accustomed to it in a sense of, of like, that's the only way you're gonna have a ball movement. But um, yeah, no, so, so you can use it on forever and it shouldn't cause a problem for you. That was another question. That yeah, I it's, it's, not, it's not a laxative. It's actually just you increasing your fiber. And once you begin to meet your fiber requirements, it's gonna make you more regular. Um, so it does um, hydration with fiber will make you regular. Wonderful, yes. wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So my next, uh, and we're going to wrap this up uh, probably in about the next 10 minutes. So if there's any more questions, please uh, make a note. I'm going to probe that with, with one or two more questions, and then I'm going to allow you guys to, um, to give us some feedback, and then we're going to close out in prayer, and we're going to let you know what's coming up next um, in, in May. So that, um, weight loss, rapid weight loss, the, those are two things you also noted. Um, you know, this goes back again to my sustainability question because rapid weight loss, you may want to get to a certain weight and there's weight loss, there's fat loss. That's something we need to define because I think depending on where we are with our weight, um, we probably need to lose fat versus weight uh, because muscle is heavier than fat. And so you may try to lose weight, but you're not, you probably may need to lose fat. So I, I want to attack the, the, the rapid weight loss because the sustainability of that, and I've seen people lose weight quick, but then they put it right back on six months down the road. Right. So um, let me clarify the muscle versus fat thing. Um, remember, a pound is a pound is a pound. So the muscle should weigh the same as the fat would weigh, weigh but your density will be different, right? Mm -hmm. So so when um, my 150, if, if I'm a skinny fat, I might might still uh, um, still look a certain way versus your 150, you're looking all compact and dense, mm -hmm. so you will look better. But um, the only time that you, the, the, the dieting is what causes you to regain it. Where you're doing a significant calorie restriction, um, you know, where you have cut back, um, you know, to a level that is not sustainable in the sense of, you know, eating only, one, um, for some people, eating only one meal and drinking three shakes a day, after a while, they can't sustain it. And that's why they regain it. Because whatever you did to lose the weight, you have to continue to do it or the weight will come back on, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so instead of, of doing fads and doing the, the quick weight loss schemes that you just, that, that you just described there, what we're, what we're saying is increase the, uh, decrease the bad things of your diet, the, decrease the, the toxic foods, decrease the, the processed foods, replace that with as much as possible with vegetables because they have limited um, calories, but they're very high in micronutrients and in your, and all the five nutrients, different nutrients that you need, your body will now feel satisfied. And so you don't have a craving and then you will reset your, your, um, set, your point. set point down into that healthy range and then you will stay down there now because you're continuing to change. eat that change. change. But it's sustainable. You can cook vegetables very, very tasty. I have um, had gone to people's homes that have made vegetable meals and it tastes like regular meals, you know? So you um, get in recipe books and trying to find ways to make it taste like something that you enjoy is, is one way to do it. And, um, and then you can sustain it. And then if you find that you are, um, you're beginning to, like you're already know to reach your goal and you're finding that you are beginning to, to regain, you just reset. Mm. So you do one of those metabolic resets that I mentioned. Metabolic reset, wonderful. It, it, um, you're at one point, and, and again, guys, this is somewhat, again, of a real talk conversation only because I've been uh, close with, with, with the pastors and, 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 and the doc um, for over four years, solid, straight. And so we, we, tend, we tend to, we talked about having this real talk conversation with you guys on Facebook and, and, and on Zoom, understanding that the challenge and the struggle is real, 
to get to this place, to get to this place of success. It takes, for some of us, it takes years because we didn't just put that weight on in a couple of weeks or a couple of months. You know, we put it on over, for some of us, a lifetime. Like I think Brother Chris pointed to 60. Um, if you're at 60 years old, um, you know, you got a, a tummy, or you got a gut, um, that's going to take some time. And it's gonna take some, some real implementation with diet. And so Pastor, you, I know, have had those challenges where you had that rapid loss and then you put it back, All right? My question then is what caused, was it psychological or was it just you wasn't ready or you thought you were ready? And, and, and <laughs> <laughs> like, I, wanted, I want the audience to know, cause you've lost weight. I've seen him lost weight and then you put it back on. And it always go when you move away from your, your healthy lifestyle principles and also knowing what is actually very effective. One of the things that I was doing and my weight started creeping back up again was um, I had moved away from strength training. I used to I have a set of dumbbells. It was 20 pounds or 25 pounds in my closet. And we would do hit. We have um, a personal trainer we used to go to two to four times um, who used to take us to some hit routines. Um, and then maybe we would say, oh, no, we can do this on our own. And we get up in the morning and do the walking for three, you know, three miles, an hour, hour and a half. We do some running up some hills and all that. Cardio is really good. But in terms of um, weight loss and in terms of restructuring your body and, re and resetting your, your weight point, um, resistant training, whether with um, dumbbells or weights or yeah. resistant bands um, and hip exercises. Which could be like mountain climbers and some other you can look it up um high intensity interval training h-i-i-t uh those would be the most effective because the body continues to burn they call it um the after training um effect continues to burn calories well after the exercise period with cardio it doesn't do the same thing and so um those are some of the things we noticed that as you keep reading and you keep doing other things, you just have to get back to a core group of principles that actually work. And to this day, we continue to do uh, resistance training. Reba has a little set of dumbbells, 10 pounds, and we would do like the lateral raises. We would do the squats with the overhead press um, in, our, in our living rooms. And, um, and then on top of that, we go in two days a week now and do some hits um, with our coach. And that is very effective because it keeps that after training burn mm -hmm. in terms of um, of keeping our metabolic rate you know, accelerated. So, so so for 48, about 48 hours after the training. So so it's so it's safe for me now to to sort of answer that question a little bit differently is that your environment didn't change, but your your attitude attitude changed. changed. And then you have to be intentional and change your environment. We used to blame our kids for a lot of things. I said, oh, you know, I, I'm not going to snack. I'm going to bring the snacks home for the kids. Um, our weakness was Oreos. Our weakness was um, Cheetos. We don't bring them into our house. We don't bring snacks into our house. And having grandkids give us a second time to do it right, we give them apples and berries. <laughs> we don't bring snacks into our house. Our house, you got to find snacks in the pantry. you got to find snacks under the cabinets. you got to find snacks over the fridge. I mean, there was just prolific snack. And um, we've gotten rid of that in our environment. Um, we just don't have it around. It's, it's just a lot safer. Oreos is the most deadly. A serving size is four Oreos. And we could put Oreos and nobody could tell us who was the Oreo thief. Okay. <laughs> Everybody just went and took four cookies. But I mean- Everybody like, know we're talking about you and Reba. I mean, no, me and Reba, kids. the kids, everybody. You just go and then you meet the empty container, you That's know, carefully <laughs> sealed. <laughs> And like nobody had the last one, you know. And so just show you, you know what, keep that stuff in your house. And so yes, environment as your mindset change, you have to also intentionally begin to change your environment um, so that it works for you. Another thing that we did, we used to have a, a TV in our bedroom. We took the TV out of our bedroom. It actually improved our health and improved our love life. Wow. Because you know, people are falling asleep with the TV on you. You know, one person wants to watch um, CSI, where the next one wants to sleep um, and have a, <laughs> having that blue light um, in your in your space. We took that out. The last thing we have to work on is is taking our phones to bed because we want to catch up with our emails and our um, yeah. and our texting. Um, so we're still working as we're winding down. Um, but that's going to be the last frontier. That's the last. 
you know, the Bible said the last enemy to be destroyed was death. So the, the last enemy to be destroyed would be those cell phones. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. And, um, and, you know, but the kids really don't need it. And that's the thing that I just wanted to point out also, because um, um, it's so much easier for them just not to even have gotten into, not to even have the comparison of what this bad stuff is and then have to fight like we did. And so it's just easier just not to do it. Um, today, when I, when um, when we were cutting up the, um, I think it was pears was cutting up for, for sage and they went to um, to do the, the Easter egg hunt so they had some some candy. And then she's like, candy is not good. I was like, no. She said, this is healthy. I said, yes. Yeah. So I said, go ahead and eat it. And she, and she said, it's sweet. I said, yeah, it is just as sweet as the candy, right? And so, um, because before they never ever have candy at all from us, but they went to the Easter egg hunt so they had the candy. And of course they, they're in different environments, not only in our sweet. house. Um, but but from us, we, um, uh, my whole goal is to make certain that I'm only giving them healthy things. That's my goal for them. It'd be easier than trying to unlearn a lot of the stuff that we've had. Wonderful, wonderful. So your environment, that's key. Um, that, that enables you to thrive and it enables you to fail depending on that environment. So again, it's, it's, it's about that time. We have to shut this down in a little bit. Um, is there any questions? On, on our Zoom audience here. I'm keeping an eye on Facebook. That's why my head is continuously down. Um, is there any questions from our Zoom audience there? Okay, so Facebook, I see you guys are kind of quiet. You're just kind of sucking and giving us a thumbs up and a heart. Um, really appreciate the presence, guys. Really appreciate the feedback and the questions that helps us to prepare for the next one. We'll, as we talk about the next one, um, you know, this conversation on diet really, surrounds uh, you know, how we get to that success point, where we get to the healthy weight. Um, we see the pastors have, have taken some time to um, really get to this place. Um, and they're there, and that's, that's why now they can share. Um, and there's still quite a bit of folks out there who are having great success and who are implementing the changes that we've already made since February. You know, We talked about insulin, then we talked about fasting, now we're talking about diet, and diet in, in the sense of nutrition, understanding what to eat. Um, so really want to make sure that you guys are, are getting all of this. Um, and, and please, you know, we're going to repost this, uh, this session this week, tomorrow. Um, uh, it's going to be also on YouTube. If you guys don't have access, um, or, you know, a friend that doesn't have access to Facebook or doesn't want to deal with Facebook, Zoom is, uh, is, is a little bit more difficult to share that. So we'll have it on, on YouTube and or Facebook, uh, in the next 24 to 48 hours. So if you didn't get a chance to, to really dive in or, Maybe you wanted to save your questions for later. You can always pose them then because uh, we will have a replay and, and, and probe some questions. But next month, uh, we're going to have uh, a different approach to this health journey, to this refocus 2022 um, on your health is we're going to get into the community. Uh, we're going to get into the kitchen. We're going to do some, some real life experiences. I think faster. We're going to use him and see how him and the, and, and, and the doc does in the house with this meal prepping. We're going to have a, a live uh, stream with that. He didn't know he's knowing now, <laughs> but uh, it was going to be me, but I was going to be him because his success is so huge. I, I, I'm, I'm one of his biggest fans. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> um, so really going to um, share some of that live information with you next month, May. Um, we're going to probably, this is going to be it for, for April because we know this month is filled with stuff. we got some other stuff going on within the group. Um, so really want to give thanks to Dr. Riva for her wealth of information and knowledge over the past two weeks with this conversation about diet. Really looking forward to um, going in the kitchen with them and having them show us how to prepare um, for a week ahead. Um, so, Pastor, again, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your wealth of, of information, for being honest with us and, and, and transparent. Doc, again, thank you again for You're your welcome. knowledge. Um, that medical community it really lends some legitimacy to these, to these talks that we're having. And so as we get ready to close, I want to close out with a word of prayer. If you guys have don't have any more questions, any more feedback, we will go ahead and do that now. Well, before I pray, I just want you to know that um, I'm going to be praying for you, but uh, we encourage you to set reasonable goals. Um, you know, it's not about losing the next 10 pounds before your son's wedding in May. It's not about those short-term goals. But if you was just set reasonable goals, and it could be as reasonable as losing a pound a week, as we were talking about that 3,500 calorie adjustment, uh, within a year, you would have lost 52 pounds. It's that simple. And just, just um, being steadfast 
Mm. You know, is the rabbit, I mean, is the total that wins the race, just being steadfast and losing that pong every week and commit to that, you know, consistency in the small things. And one day you're going to wake up and you're going to be at your goal. And that's what we're going to pray for you, that God will give you the courage and also the, cons the consistent or the, the patient endurance uh, with your faith to see the results you desire. Father, we love you. We thank you for your grace and your anointing presence in our lives. You have told us through your apostles that you desire and wish above all else that we be in good health and prosper as our souls prosper. Our desire as believers, as pastors, as servants of the Lord Jesus Christ is to see your people flourish spiritually. But Father God, we've seen a contrast. We've seen a contradiction among the evangelical circles where even given the spiritual depth um, of our saints, we have seen so much that is um, lacking in, in other areas of their lives, and we've been living lives that are out of balance. We're praying that through your anointing, you help us to bring our lives back into balance, bring our lives back into focus, yeah. knowing that you've given us every area of our lives to enjoy the time with our families, the time in worship with our corporate other corporate believers, the time even um, pursuing our health and pursuing the welfare and the, the prosperity of our of our families and those we love. Um, you've commanded us to be blessed so that we can be a blessing to the ends of the earth. And we are asking, Father God, even now, that you will help us to, um, to have the right mindset yes. and give us the faith to begin to make those adjustments in terms of healthier lifestyles so that we could be more conscientious about this amazing gift of God that you have given us in our bodies in which dwells the temple of the Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, that, that dwells in us. We're praying, Father God, that you give us patient endurance mixed with our faith so that we can see the outcome of the results um, that we so desperately want to be a part of our lives. Not just the physical appearance of losing weight and of looking better, yes, but Father God, of really living out our days in good health yes, yes. as you have commanded us. And now as we go our separate prayers, may your favor and your anointing be for life. May you continue to guide us along the best pathway of our life. And may you make um, may you make it seem easy where it's hard, and that comes through supernatural um, endurance. We're praying that from the gift and the person of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for this gathering. We thank you for all the people of God who's contributed before us, all those who are forerunners to this point. Uh, we give you praise for them, and we thank you for all of your saints and the various gifts to bring it into the body of Christ. In the mighty name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you guys so much for being here, for being here for the extended version, uh, for listen, listening to us. And you can tell that both myself and Pastor Riva, even though we are a very strong unit and partnership, we do have differences in how we approach things. I, I tend to find it a little easier um, out um, from all of the strict requirements. But at the end of the day, we know that you're going to have good success if you apply um, the principles uh, that we have been having conversation about over the several weeks. Yes, and the whole goal is to to do um, and just to, to 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 summarize: eat as much as you can healthy and as less as you can unhealthy. Yes, you know that's your goal. That's you know true. to have as much as you can of the healthy things, a little bit of that unhealthy things, because you still live in this world. Mm -hmm. You're still gonna go to a barbecue or whatever, and there's gonna be something that you still want to mm -hmm. try. So it's not that you can't ever have ever, ever, ever again, unless that's your personal conviction. But the goal is to eat, to shift your, your choices where the majority of the time when you're eating, your plate looks like a rainbow. God bless you all and we pray for success oh. as we all continue to strive to do well, God one, bless you all. Have a great evening. One more no audio I took away from Doc and I want you guys to make a note of this. Don't adjust to the guide, don't adjust to the guidelines don't adjust don't, your guidelines. don't adjust the guidelines to your habits. Adjust your habits to the guidelines. Yeah. All right. Don't adjust to the don't adjust the guidelines to your habits, but yet your habits to the guidelines. That's gonna bring change. Yeah. Much love. We we'll see you guys on the next side. All right. Take care. Next time where? <laughs> where, where? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm being here on this earth. In, don't May, know what in May. The next okay. time. In May. Okay. You got sessions sure. upon sessions upon sessions coming up. All right. Much yeah. love, guys. Until Take next care. time. God bless y'all. Take care. Bye-bye. No, thank you. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good night. Good, Good night, night, everyone. Thank you for being part of our conversations.
Pousse.